Hi there and welcome back. Let's continue with the urinary system and in this video we will focus on kidney stone and the fancy name or the medical jargon used for that is nephrolithiasis. So the kidney stone or the nephrolithiasis or the renal calculi are usually composed of uric acid and and or calcium salts. Although the, the reason why this happens or the etiology is not known, but it is believed that there is increase in the concentration of calcium related to parathyroid gland tumor and or high level of uric acid in the blood called uh, hyperuricemia uh, associated with gout or the gouty arthritis may contribute to the formation of this uh, uh, kidney stone. It can lodge in the ureter, bladder, kidney, anywhere. It can, it can block the normal flow, uh, maybe in the renal pelvis and uh, it needs to be removed if necessary unless it is too small and it, it can pass through on its own and that's why one of the reason it's a good idea to remain hydrated and uh, drink enough water, enough fluid but if necessary then maybe through the medications or they do the, the sound waves to break down called uh, lithotripsy the uh, process through which the big stone is broken down into the smaller ones to get rid of it and in the worst case scenario surgery may be required. So what is this kidney stone? This kidney stone is a solid mass formed from the substances that we have even in a healthy human being in the urine. But what happens is sometimes these substances are, are consolidated and they turn into and they form themselves into a stone. So, these substances are, it could be calcium, cysteine, oxalate, xenethine, urate or phosphate. It could be any one of these or all of these. Basically, these are the waste products. So, they must exit from the body. If not, it's not good. So, kidney stones, they could be of a different size from a grain of a sand to a, a pearl and sometimes as big as golf balls although rare but it, you, you may have a patient or someone with the kidney stone as big as a size of a golf ball the smaller stones pass through on its own without even sometimes being noticed and you may not feel it the large stones requires some treatment as I was just telling you so and it could block anywhere it can lead to a severe pain I know as I go through this a friend of mine is currently going through this and uh, finally I heard that he is feeling better now so yes you feel the pain there could be bleeding if it doesn't pass on its own medication or surgery is the treatment but when we talk about the treatment with the kidney stones there are things to be considered by the doctor and the patient, uh, the size of the stone, shape of the stone, location, type and the number of stones. So those are the details that determines what course of treatment is necessary. So obviously the question may arise as to what are the risk factors that may contribute to or trigger ultimately having the kidney stones. So these are the common sense things that we all can think together and run through quickly. So the risk factors for the kidney stones are not drinking enough liquid. Uh, one may have a frequent or repeated urinary tract infections that could lead to the uh, uh, kidney stones. One may have a blockage in any of the urinary tract that could also trigger because it obstructs the normal flow and there is a higher likelihood of developing the kidney stones. Um, you may have a family history of kidney stones, so there are some 
uh, factors related to the genetics. Uh, what are the health conditions that can affect the levels of the substances in the urine that can cause stones to form? So, can you think about? Well, you know the answer. High calcium levels in the urine to begin with, then of course, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, they all contribute. Gout, kidney cyst, osteoporosis, a parathyroid disease, cystic fibrosis, chronic diarrhea, they all are playing and contributing towards this. Now, there are certain specific foods and flavor enhancers like a sugar or uh, high salt, some kind of uh, meat and poultry, animal proteins, uh, certain specific foods may contribute depending upon the how foods are processed and made that may lead to the specific type of kidney stone that one may form. So let's say somebody has a kidney stone. So what, what may happen? What are the signs and symptoms? So you may have a pain in the lower back or on the side of the body, right? Uh, you may feel the need to urinate more often. Uh, there could be blood in the urine, pain while urinating. Sometimes you may be unable to urinate. Uh, the urine that smells bad and looks cloudy uh, you may end up having fever, you may feel like vomiting and why is that because the, the waste that must get out of your body unable to get through from the bottom so you feel like how to get rid of it so you feel like vomiting. How do doctors diagnose the kidney stones or the nephrology acids? They start with the physical exam, they look at your family uh, history, your personal medical history, uh, they do the blood and urine test to see what abnormalities are out there in your blood, in your urine and we'll get into those specifics uh, as we move forward in this presentation series and of course on as needed basis the required imaging test can be done. So the treatment options are first and foremost no treatment, allow the stones to pass on its own, if needed <coughs> medications to start the process, um, minimum invasive to ultimate surgery that may be necessary. Ways to decrease your risk of kidney stones include and again these are the common sense things that you can think of. Drinking more fluid, especially water, limiting amount of salt, sugar, lose weight if you are obese. Avoid that type of food that your doctor recommends because of your medical profile, personal history, family history that uh, triggers and contributes to the stone or forming the kidney stone. Limit the type of food and drinks that led to the development of your specific type of kidney stone. But having said all this, the, there are some good news here. The outlook for the kidney stone is very positive. So many of the stones, they pass on their own. It's not bothersome. There are cases where you may have to have medication and or uh, require a surgery. But unfortunate part is this that even though you may pass the kidney stone, there is a possibility of likelihood of you developing the kidney stone again in your life. Okay? So it may happen multiple times throughout the life. So I found this interesting. So just to give you an idea that phosphate stones, oxalate stones, urate stones, xanthine stones, cystine stones, these are the different kind of stones. And as I was saying that kidney stones can be formed anywhere. So we have it here in the ureter, in the kidney, 
it can be anywhere and uh, that may create all sorts of these signs and symptoms and hope nobody has to go through all this and try to remain hydrated, drink plenty of water, fluid, right? Let's move on to this presentation series. That's all I have on the kidney stones. It's an easy subject. But when you have it, you feel it, you feel the pain. So uh, be careful out there. I will be back soon with another important aspect on this urinary system. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.